opportunity to serve and open up his house. And just to be here today, we honor First Lady, amen, uh, officers, members, friends, amen, visitors. We, we say God bless you. Those that are visiting with us via social media, God bless you. We thank you for allowing us to serve you on this morning. If you have your Bibles, if you would join me in Genesis, Genesis, the third chapter, and we'll read in your hearing verses one through six. You have to work with me here. I, I keep saying I need to get another preaching Bible. This is my one of my study Bibles, so it's very heavily redacted, if you would. Various notes written over it, and sometimes it's hard to see. But we'll get through this together, amen. Again, that's Genesis, the third chapter, verses one through six. Amen. It should be a very easy find. And we're going back to the beginning. Amen. Then you find these words. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yet, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In the sixth verse, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Amen. If I could just reason with you, amen, for just a little while. I want to do so from thought, sight, the activation of free will. <clears throat> Many times we elect to do things by what we see. And here in this account, God had given a commandment. He had given a commandment to Adam and told him not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Another thing that we see here is that this command was not repeated by God where when it was given, woman was yet absent. But now we see woman given an answer to the question of the fruit. So we thereby can quickly understand that what she knew she had to get from Adam. All that being aside, one thing that we should look at or look into is that, one, when God created man, man had free will. Even though he was given a commandment not to eat of the tree, he had ability to disobey that commandment at the time that it was given. So we ask, well, why did he never disobeyed this commandment. Well, we see the reason why. The word tells us in the sixth verse that it wasn't until the woman was made to see that the tree was pleasant. It wasn't until she was given the option to understand that there was something more told to her about this tree that she didn't know that caused the invoking process of free will. In other words, we have the commandments of God plainly before us. But time and time and time again, 
The devil brings options and puts them before us and says, well, I know God said this in his word, but this is really not the way it is. If, if, if you do it this way, this is the only thing that will happen. And, and many times we find ourselves walking or making decisions versus by what we see than what we're supposed to know. If we understand that God's word is unfailing, if we understand that God's word means exactly what it says, then we need to figure out why we have such a hard time following it. And that hard time is simply right between your, right on the opposite sides of your nose. It's what you can see that changes the dynamic of what you do. In other words, the devil takes a fleshly option and puts it before you to make you fail at following a spiritual commandment. And thereby, this is where Paul does not give us this commandment, but he echoes something that had already been penned in the Old Testament that says, we shall walk by faith and not by sight. The just walk by faith, which is the original text, mm -hmm. and not by sight. He just says we walk by faith and not by sight, but the original text said the just walks by faith and not by sight. Because the just understand that you can be fooled by what you see. Amen. Many times Amen. it has happened to us we find ourselves in relationships with people just because we saw them. We glanced across the room and we fell in love at first sight. Not understanding that the devil put infatuation before us and said, this looks good. And now you've fallen into a relationship that you seem to can't escape and get out of. And you say to yourself, why did I never see these things? Amen. Well, you never saw these things because the devil fooled you into thinking that it was love rather than infatuation. And now that you were infatuated with what you see, what you saw has gone away, and now you've opened your eyes to what is, and now you can't deal with it. I, I wish somebody would understand this morning that it is the devil's job to show you Something different other than what God said. Amen. Even to this time, I told Deacon I was thinking about this yesterday. For years, the church has been talking about faith that can move mountains. Faith that has nothing to do but to follow God's word. We have faith and we will never forsake the assembly. But then, here comes a mountain that you see and now your faith means nothing. We've come to a time and we have had a year where it is now simply something that makes sense to not follow commandments anymore. When you've had preachers that say you're foolish for going to church. You're not, you shouldn't even be there. But these are the same preachers that sat there for years and years and preached Hebrews to people. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together when you see the end times coming. Look at this again. When you see the end times coming. Now we are seeing the end times coming and we are forsaking everything we never said we believed. We got to get out of this place of walking by what we see. By letting our eyes into situations that the devil is trying to trick us into. It is not God that's going to show you something that's going to seem like the right way to do things or in the right way to go and then trick you into a place that you shouldn't be. Think about this. This was brought up this morning. When the children of Israel left captivity, they didn't leave captivity able to see Canaan. I need somebody to catch this. 
They did not leave. They did not leave Egypt thinking that they were going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. But they left Egypt on the word of God and trusting the word of God that they will make it into the land flowing of milk and honey. Amen. Amen. What I need you to understand is it does not matter how long it takes for God's word to manifest. What you cannot get tripped up by or diverted by is what you see. And many of the people that were in this time, they were diverted in this 40 years in the wilderness because they started to look. They started to see certain things and question what their eyes were seeing. I'm reminded of the word that said when Peter went on the water to, see, to meet Jesus. Watch this. The word said that he came down at the word of God that just said come. But the word of God also says once he got down there, he started to see that the winds were boisterous. He started to see that he was out on the water. And he stopped trusting and he started to sink. I'm here to tell you this morning, your sight will invoke your free will. Your sight will cause you to walk in a way that is not right according to the way of God. You will find yourself wondering, God, why did you put me here? But it won't be God that has placed you where you are. It will be the factor that you wanted to see where you were going. Watch this. I need you to catch this. Jesus called the Pharisees a wicked and perverse generation for wanting a sign. But that's all we pray to God for. God, show me this. God, show me that. God, I need you to show it to me. God does not have to show you anything other than what he's already called you to see. His word is clear. He has paid the price. But you are still looking for him to show you something. And what happens is the devil shows you exactly what it is you want to see. And you start walking in that way. And you enter into the trap. And you want to blame God. Talking about, God, why did, did you do this? Why did you stop trusting in his word? I once had somebody ask me a question. They asked me a question. Well, preacher, do you think angels have free will? And I shocked them with my answer. Yes, the angels have free will. Well, why do the angels just do the will of God if they have free if they don't have free will? The reason that they don't have free will is because the option of evil does not exist in heaven. Get this now. If it when at the time when evil existed in heaven, when Satan decided he was going to ascend into heaven, that is the only time that angels were swept out of heaven. You must have an option to invoke free will. If there are no options given, then free will means nothing. You can follow God's commandments long as the devil is not giving you other options. Long as you're not seeing your way, then you can walk by faith. But long as you have to see something, there is a God of this world that will allow you to see it. And when you see it, I, I think the old people had a way of putting it this way. Boy, stop looking for fool's gold. Some of us are trying to get to heaven on fool's gold. Mm. You're Amen. thinking that you can sow your way into heaven. Amen. You're thinking that you can attend church into your into, into getting to heaven. None of these things will matter if you can't simply by faith follow the commandments of God. Amen. I don't care how much money you give. I tell people all the time, you can give your whole paycheck until you leave this world and open your eyes in hell. Mm. Because it's not by might. It's not by your money. It's not by what you can see. He has given all of us a measure of faith. He's given us faith for a reason. He's given us faith so we can understand his word. 
And then we get up in the pulpit and say, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And think that we're looking of houses, cars, land. These are the things that faith manifests. Well, let me help you out. If you can see that house that you're asking God for, it is not the evidence of something that you can't see. If you're asking God for that new car, you've already seen that car. You don't need faith for that. You just need a good credit score and a down payment. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. What you need to understand, what Paul was talking about here was, not faith. Because when you came to God, your faith was in material things. When you came to God, it was because you had a broken situation that you wanted him to fix. When you came to God, it was about you. But now, faith, as you become mature in your walk, your faith becomes in what is eternal, not is in what is representative in this earth. So now you see the substance of what you hope for is wrong about before. That substance that you hope for is to be absent from the body and present with the Lord and able to stay with the Lord. Not just have a business badge on till he tells you to depart. But you need to understand this is the substance of the thing you have never seen. You believe heaven exists and you have never seen it. This is the, what faith is for. This is what faith is about. This is the substance of the thing you hope for and the evidence of the thing you cannot see. The evidence of heaven is my life. The evidence of God is how I walk. It doesn't matter what I don't see. It matters what I believe. And if God has given me a promise that if I follow his word, his results will be sure. It I need to help somebody this morning. The main reason why the promises of God do not manifest in your life is because you are still trying to do things your way. God's word means what it says. Once you do your part, his part is automatic. There is nothing else greater for God to swear by than his own self. What he said he would do is what he will do. But if, his, if, if what he said is not manifesting, it's not him, it's you. Mm -hmm. It's you and your desire for God to show it to you. He has. Keep reading. Mm -hmm. He's showing it to you. You just need to understand it. And stop thinking that his word is to manifest your prosperity. Stop thinking that his word is to put you in a good situation when he has told you in this life you will have trials and tribulation. Yes. This is not about a walk of ease. This is about can you trust God through the situations? Can you trust God through coronavirus? Can you trust God without a stimulus check? Can you trust God even though there is no other way that you see? Amen. But if you're looking around today, the only thing that you're going to operate in is fear. I can't do this because they said. They said the only way to be safe is to do this. I need you to understand something. Just like God can speak through man, so can the devil. Yes, yes. We are human beings that are used either one way or the other. Either there is good or there is evil. We're too busy trying to see right and wrong that we don't understand that the word says those that are of full age can discern good and evil. And discern does not mean physical sight. Discern means spiritual sight. Faith, in other words, can cause you to see something your eyes never can. 
So that person, you Google eyes at across the room. If you were not more into their outer continents, you would have discerned their inner spirit. And you would have saw that they were no good for you. But because you have no faith, because you don't have any spiritual reasoning, you just feel that, oh, this must be what God wants for me. Mm. This must be what God wants me to do. Because this is how I see it. I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of people that have done things wrong because it made sense to them. Because it looked right to them. What do you think the devil's job is? To make it look like something you're supposed to do. And meanwhile, the things that you should see, you don't see. I just need somebody to understand this morning. Then you say, well, preacher, what was my eyes given to me for if they weren't able to see things? Well, that's exactly what your eyes were given to you for, to see things. It was just not given to you to see things physically or carnally. If without your eyes, you trip over things. Mm -hmm. Without your eyes, you wouldn't be able to see present dangers. But I'm going to tell you something else. Without faith, you can't see clear and present danger. Because faith causes you to see something that your eyes have no way of tuning into. Amen. And see, some of us have this problem of seeing in the spirit. Because some of us are only tuned in to the earthly product. And therefore, the devil can show up just like he did with Snow White and say, here's an apple. Take it. And you say, that looks good. Is that a Granny Smith? <laughs> oh yeah, that tastes good. And you bite into it. And it's worm filled. It's rotten to the core. You spit it out soon as it touches your tongue. But now, the taste is forever in your mouth. This is what happened in the beginning. We were tripped up by what we saw and the cycle has repeated itself ever since. That's our problem. We want to be as wise as God. We want to see what God sees. Trust me, you don't. You don't need to see what God sees. You don't need to know what God knows. All you need to do is follow what he asks. And until you can wrap your mind around that, what you see will fail you. What you see will distract you. What you see will cause you to go to hell. As I close and get ready to get out of your way, I need you to understand this morning, what you see will determine how you walk. Do you really want to walk for God? Stop asking for a sign. Why does he say this is perverse? Why does he say this is wicked? Because it's only somebody who's wicked that believes that they are big enough for God to have to prove themselves to them. What kind of sense does that make for your creator to have to prove something to you? The fact that you're here should prove alone that there's something greater than you. The fact that the sun rises and sets like it's been told to do from the beginning. The reason that the clouds are in the sky, the, the, the whole earth rotates on its axis, is that not enough for you to believe? Man cannot do this. There is no Big Bang Theory. You can't even repeat the Big Bang Theory. But the Word tells me that there's nothing new under the sun that will make the Big Bang Theory new because it has never been repeated. I'll tell you two things that hasn't been repeated. And one of them, because it hasn't repeated, is the reason why the church is going to continue to go and spiral in the place that it's in. One thing that hasn't been repeated, the Big Bang Theory. The second but more important thing that has not been repeated is the day of Pentecost where all the preachers were on one accord and the church that came on one accord. But the church is divided because the leaders are divided. The church is confused because the preachers are confused. The church is worried about money because the preachers are worried about money. The church is going to hell because a lot of preachers are going to hell. I said, and if you've got a problem with it, what's our number, D? 804 493 
three, three, four, five. Let's talk about it. It is time out for the foolishness of sight. It is time out by merely just walking by what we see and blaming God for falling for the tricks of the enemy. What you see will get you in trouble. The just march to heaven by faith as they wait to see the substance of what they hope for and the evidence of the thing they have never seen. Let your faith mature to that. Let your faith mature to the point to where you just trust God regardless to what the God of this world shows you. <laughs> I'm really getting out of your way. I saw something today, uh, the other day that made me think. And I said to myself, how foolish. And I read a post that said, if you're a kingdom citizen, illness is illegal. And I remember thinking to myself, well, that's only true if you're living in the kingdom of heaven. But until then, You've got to deal with sickness. You've got to deal with death. You've got to deal with trials and tribulations. That is the ignorance that we are teaching people. And as, I get, as I'm prepared to try to get out your way, I need to cause you to see things in the light of faith as opposed to your sight. Many of us have misinterpreted Matthew the, the 17th chapter, 22nd verse, where Jesus says, if you have faith the size of a mountain, of a, of a, a mustard seed, you can move mountains. The reason why we misinterpret this is because we forget what God did before he said what he said. Some of you all are still talking to your situations and problems. <sighs> you, and, I, and I think I can, without saying any names, have people not understand what, who, who said this. You got preachers standing up in public. Coronavirus! I blow the wind of God on you. Blow away. And coronavirus is still here. Talking to your problems and situations is just as foolish as talking to idol gods who cannot hear it, hear you and see you and do anything to you. The word says that demons tremble. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Not your problems and situations. Your problems and situations are caused by the demons. And while you're sitting here talking to what you can see, your faith is not causing you to see the demon that's behind it. And therefore, you're not talking to the demon, so the problem remains. But if you go back to the 17th chapter of Matthew, when Jesus healed the boy of epilepsy, he merely rebuked the devil and the child was healed from that very hour. He didn't heal him of the sickness. The sickness was called by, caused by the devil that was in him. But when the devil flee, he took his problem with him. Some of y'all are talking to the problem while the devil's sitting there laughing at you. <laughs> they, they, they think it's that problem. They, 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 he, he can't see me. Because you can only see your problem in the situation. And as long as you remain in the physical, the devil got you. Long as you stay in what you can see, you will see the wrong thing when you close your eyes here. I'm done.